All right, in this tutorial, we're going to be talking about persistent events. And persistent events are events that leave their influence on the character. In most cases, when an animation finishes, it has no impact on the state of the character after it finishes. Now, that is not true for persistent events. So we're going to add the blink curve to the blink persist animation. And we're going to set keys for this curve up at 1. In order for a persistent event to do anything meaningful, it needs to persist some non-zero values. Um, so it's going to leave this blink curve up at 1. And I'm going to show you what this is doing in the auto workspace animation by adding a blink persist event to it. And now when I go to the blink curve, it does about what we'd expect. It snaps the blink curve up to 1, and then it snaps it back down to 0. Now we don't really like snaps, so we're going to change the blend in to 0.5 and the blend out to 0.5. And so now we have a ramp in and a ramp out that occurs over half of this animation. The 0.5 references the scale of the, uh, of the animation. And when I click this persist values button, what's going to happen is I'm going to get this little arrow that says my values are now persisting and the blend out is not going to occur. So it blends in and holds the value up at 1. Now how long does it hold the value for? To show you that, I'm going to create a copy with Control c and then Control v And now I've got another animation that's going to take control of this blink curve. It doesn't have to be the exact same uh, animation of blink persist. It just needs to be an animation with the blink curve. And this one, I'm going to set its magnitude scale to 0. And so now you can see what's happening is that the first event ramps the blink curve up, and the second event ramps it down over this one's blend in time. So if I change this guy's blend in time, uh, he will ramp, he will take control of it more steeply. Now you might be wondering when the blend out is ever taken into account, and it is, but in circumstances like this, where one persistent event is blending in and another one tries to fire. Um, now you've got um, a problem in that you've got two animations essentially trying to control the same thing. And so if that happens, we're going to stick with the first one's value, which is why this is holding up at 1. But the blend out is actually used in this event uh, to determine how long it blends out for. So it is important to keep uh, non-zero blend out values for persistent events uh, if you're going to have a case like this where there's going to be overlapping uh, events. But typically for persistent events, we're going to want to have them separated by some distance and have the values hold over the course of that distance. And so you see that persistent events are a very powerful tool for uh, creating curves that hold over a period of time.